Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome. My name is Vignesh. I am from Texas Instruments, India, and I will be presenting about the Spina subsystem. Uh, to introduce myself, I am part of the Linux team that works on supporting various DI SOCs in the mainline kernel. I work on supporting peripheral layers, drivers like QSPY, UART, touchscreen, and USB. And this presentation is mainly based on my experience of getting QSPY to work in uh, TI platforms on the mainline kernel. So let's begin. Uh, this is the agenda of uh, today's presentation. I'll be talking about SpyNor flash devices and its types, communicating with the SpyNor flashes, SpyNor framework, the SpyNor controller drivers, and types of the SpyNor controller drivers supported under the SpyNor framework, writing a controller driver, and ongoing development work, and what's missing today in the SpyNor framework. So what's a SpyNor flash? A NOR flash is a non-volatile solid state storage media where the storage cells behave like a NOR get, hence it's called a NOR flash. NOR flash are available in uh, parallel interface or serial interface. So uh, serial NOR flash are typically interfaced to SOC via SPI bus, hence they are called SPI NOR flash. Uh, these flashes have reduced pin count when you compare with the normal parallel NOR flash. Okay. This table tries to compare uh, SPI NOR with NAND and EMMC, which are the other two uh, most common non-volatile storage media that you find on embedded boards. In terms of capacity, SPI NOR flashes are in the range of megabytes, whereas NAND and EMMC are available in gigabytes of capacity. Uh, NOR flash have uh, somewhere around one to eight I.O. lines, but NAND and EMMC may have up to 16 I.O. lines. So uh, the read speed uh, when compared, uh, you see that NOR, SPI NOR have a ra fast random access, that is uh, the time taken to access the first byte is usually in the order of nanoseconds, uh, whereas uh, NAND and EMMC have a uh, random read access speed in the order of uh, microseconds. So, the, but in terms of writes, NAND and EMMC are usually faster when compared to SPINOR. Uh, NAND technology has such uh, is not quite reliable, that is, it suffers from random bit flips and poor write endurance. Then, hence, we need ECC and bad block management, either in software or in hardware. Um, EMMC has such needs tuning to support higher speed of operations, but SpyNor has no such software overheads. Uh, all this reliability, fast random access, and reduced number of pins makes SpyNor an ideal boot media, uh, and it's mostly most commonly a primary boot media or secondary or backup boot media in, in embedded devices. So this diagram shows a typical SpyNor flash connected to a Spy controller. The top three signals are common Spy signals. There is a clock running from controller to flash. There is master or sl slave in and master and slave out. Uh, MOSI line is used by controller to send data to flash, and the other line is used by flash to send data back to the master. There's a chip select line to select the appropriate chip to talk to. But uh, the write, protect, and hold lines are mostly flash specific. Uh, write, protect is used to make NOR flash read only, and uh, uh, not respond to write or array commands. Hold line is used to pass a transaction without actually deselecting the uh, NOR flash, so that you could pause and then resume the transaction. Sorry. Um, this diagram shows a multi-IO flash where there are four bidirectional IO lines connecting controller and the flash. Therefore, we call the flash as quad spy flash, and the controller is a quad spy controller. In quad mode, the write protect and I/O lines double has, uh, sorry, write protect and hold line double has I/O two and I/O three lines, making it four I/O lines. There are also uh, NOR flashes with up to eight I/O lines, which are called octal I/O flash, or 
you could have a nor flash working with just two IO lines, IO0 and IO1 in bidirectional mode. Uh, such flashes are called dual IO flash. So there, uh, some to summarize, there are dual IO, quad IO, and octal IO flashes. A uh, little bit introduction to the spine or hardware itself. Uh, a spy flash is composed of sectors and pages. This a sector is the smallest possible array block size. Uh, it may be 4K, 32K, 64K, or 256K in size. The sectors are subdivided into pages. Page represents uh, pages may be 256 bytes or 512 bytes. A page represents what is the maximum number of bytes that can be programmed in a single write operation. So before we do any write or read operation, we have to set write enable latch inside the flash. This is done by sending write enable command. This has to be sent for uh, every sector or every page in term when you are doing a write operation. So most flash devices support uh, read ID command, which is used to discover the flash. Uh, read ID command is a JDEC standard. Uh, it the sending read ID command, the flash will respond with the manufacturer ID, device ID, and uh, uh, unique ID of the flash. This will help in discovering the uh, a flash in a unique way. Also, a spy transaction between uh, spy master and nor flash has four phase: uh, command phase, address phase, wait phase, and data phase. Uh, co during command phase, the master sends out the one byte opcode, which will represent whether it's a read, write, erase, or accessing a flash register, like configuration registers or status registers that are there within the flash. This is followed by address phase which is three to four bytes long, depending upon the opcode and the flash configuration itself. Uh, if it's a read operation, and if the spy bus frequency is greater than 50 megahertz, or if it's a multi-IO operation like dual IO, quad IO, or octal IO reads, there is an additional wait phase, which is anywhere between eight cycle to n number of cycles, as denoted in the flash data sheets. Uh, during this phase, there is no data exchange between master and slave, uh, but there is a clock running. Hence, these clock cycles are called dummy clock cycles. Sorry, dummy clock cycles. And uh, yeah, during this phase, the flash prepares itself to send data back to the controller. And finally, in the data phase, depending upon whether it's read or write transaction. Uh, the data is either sent from flash to the device or device to the uh, master. So moving on, uh, we we'll talk some about the spine or controllers itself. Typically, the sp controllers that are supported in Linux uh, can be classified into three types for the ease of understanding. Um, Traditional spy controllers, spy nor controllers, and the specialized spy controllers. The traditional spy controllers provide direct access to the spy bus. That is, you could send any arbitrary uh, data out on the spy bus and um, send it to a spy slave. So these devices can talk with any type of spy devices. It might be spy flash or a normal spy device like a touchscreen, etc. Uh, these spy controllers don't usually have a very deep FIFO and hence cannot support a large burst of read, read or write operations. The second type of controllers are spy nor controllers. These controllers are aware of the fact that the slave they are talking to is a spy slave and they only support talking to the spy slave device, uh, spy flash slave devices. And they are aware of the fact that the communication protocol has command, address, and data phase. Uh, Spinor controllers provide low latency access to flash, either via memory mapped interface or uh, any other accelerated interface. In the memory mapped interface, the entire uSpy or the flash device appears to be memory mapped inside the SOC address space. Uh, and CPU could just do a mem copy read from that. Uh, at this range, and it will get the data from the flash. Uh, these controllers also pro support read, fetch, and have an internal uh, hardware buffers to accelerate the 
amount of data that can be fetched in one go. But they don't provide access to spy bus directly, which is the reason why these flashes can, uh, sorry, these controllers cannot directly talk to the spy devices other than flashes. Then there are specialized spy controllers, which are like hybrid of traditional controllers and the spy nor controllers. They, ha they will have interface uh, which is similar to the traditional controller as well as, an, as well as an additional interface which would provide an accelerated access to the SpyNOR framework, sorry, SpyNOR devices like memory mapped interface that I just talked about. Uh, coming to the SpyNOR framework, the SpyNOR framework was introduced in kernel in order to support the uh, second type of flash devices that I said, the sp dedicated SpyNOR controllers, which only talk about uh, spy flash devices. Uh, it was merged in V316. Uh, it is present under the memory devices, memory technology devices subsystem. And this is the path to the source code. Uh, this was derived from the pre-existing M25 PAT flash driver code, which was supporting um, all flashes under the uh, on on the spy bus, uh, it had code to support both flash and talk to the spy core. And the flash specific part was refactored, and uh, spy not controller driver was uh, done. So, what was the need for spy not framework? Uh, the main reason was to support controllers that only talk to spy flash devices, and uh, uh, these flash uh, controllers needed to know information about the flash with which they are talking to. And there was a need for a generic interface or generic framework that could supply this information. So we'll go into each type of spy controllers in detail. This is the traditional spy controllers. These controllers uh, are quite simple. They have a TXV4, RXV4, and a shifter unit. Uh, CPU or DMA would write data into the TXV4, and whatever is written is just shifted out onto the spy bus. And similarly, the data that is received from the flash device is uh, sent out uh, by reading the FIFO. So uh, since there is direct access to this FIFO, the CPU can send uh, any type of uh, protocol here. I mean, CPU can implement any type of protocol, and the same get shifted out on the bus. Hence, making it possible to communicate with any type of flash devices or uh, any type of spy devices like touchscreen, etc. So there is no notion of command phase, address phase, or data phase anywhere here. So this represents the kernel stack to access spy flash using the traditional spy controller that I just showed you. Uh, at the top, we have MTD framework, which is the memory technology devices framework, which, abstract, which abstracts all type of raw flashes like NAND, NOR, and similar devices. Uh, MTD uh, abstracts these devices and exposes them as character devices or block devices to the user space. Uh, user space utilities like MTD utils or flash-based file systems can be mounted up on top of this CAR device interface to read, write, and access the flash. MTD also abstracts flash-specific properties like presence of sector, page, and also does the ECC handling in case of, say, NAND flash. Uh, it provides wear leveling and bad block handling using the unsorted block images, which is the basis for uh, UBIFS file system. It handles partitioning of flash storage space based on either command line arguments or device tree uh, data. All the MTD devices in a system can be uh, obtained by reading MTD procfs entry. You could do cat slash proc slash MTD and it lists all the devices. So under this MTD framework, we have the SpyNOR framework itself. Uh, the SpyNOR framework is responsible for implementing the SpyNOR specific abstractions, uh, the read, write, and erase operations of the flash to detect the connected flash and configure the flash to operate in appropriate modes. 
Um, it provides the flash specific informations like array size, page size to the MTD layer so that it could be used by the file systems. And uh, it also supports the dedicated Spinor controllers, um, I, uh, which need to know flash specific information like what opcode to use, what is the number of address bytes, and the dummy cycle information, and so on. And finally, implements uh, support for multi IO flash devices. So below the Spinor framework, we have M25 P80 driver. Uh, which is basically a generic driver to access flash devices on the SPI bus. Uh, the M25 P80 driver acts as a translation layer between SpyNor framework and the SPI core. Uh, it implements the SpyNor interfaces, and based on the uh, information that SpyNor provides, it generates SPI transfer structures, uh, which would represent, which would encompass all the command address data phase and then pass it as a spy message object to the spy core. Uh, all the communication within spy core or communication with spy core is always in terms of spy messages. Therefore, uh, M25P80 acts as a translation layer and generates those spy messages based on the parameters supplied by the spy NOR framework. Those th the spy core, uh, the sub messages that are submitted by M25P80 will land in the spy core. The spy core validates, queues, and the sends the spy messages from upper layer to the controller drivers. The spy controller driver writes data to the TX and RX FIFO, and whatever data that is received via the RX FIFO is sent along the same path back to the uh, M2D, uh, spy NOR and MTD framework. So this diagram shows the second type of spy controllers that is dedicated spy or controllers with memory mapped IO interface. So the entire flash here would appear has memory mapped region for the SOC at predefined address range as specified by the SOC. So the CPU would first configure the IP registers within the spy or I controller IP with flash specific re uh, properties like the opcode to be used to read from the flash, uh, opcode to use to write to the flash, number of address bytes to use, and the dummy cycle, and all this information would be pre-configured in the IP registers. Then the CPU would do a mem copy operation uh, to read data from the flash. This transaction will land in the spy command generator block. The spy command generator would generate appropriate spy transaction on the spy bus based on the information that is supplied by the I IP supplied at the IP registers. And the data that is received from the NOR flash would be forwarded via the M memory mapped interface. Since uh, the gen generation of spy transaction on the bus is handled by the hardware, it is possible for the hardware to make 100% utilization of the spy bus cycles available here, uh, due to which you could achieve the maximum possible data rate on the spy bus. So it need not be memory mapped interface. Some controllers would just provide a, a big internal SRAM or a FIFO, and the data that is received from the flash is stored in the FIFO, and uh, CPU or DMA could read in a large bus, therefore making effect effective utilization of uh, the available interconnect cycles as well. So uh, this stack shows, uh, this kernel stack shows how dedicated SpyNor controllers are supported in the kernel. So uh, the uh, SpyNor layer, instead of taking the traditional route, now will stock, talk directly to the SpyNor controller driver itself. Uh, this will provide all the information required for the flash and the controller driver is responsible for programming the IP registers. The controller driver, sorry, the controller driver would also provide uh, an, in, I mean, would also provide a way to write to the flash registers and read from the flash register. And it will implement uh, interfaces to read data from flash, either via memory mapped interface or some internal hardware buffers.
Yes, okay. Uh, this diagram shows a specialized spike controllers, which is the third type of controllers that I talked about. Uh, these controllers provide uh, two interfaces. One would be a spy interface, and another is a memory mapped interface. Using the spy interface, uh, which which we'll mark here as direct access path, uh, CPU can directly access TX and RX FIFO. Uh, therefore, you could talk to any type of spy devices, not just the flash, using this direct access path. But uh, it also provides memory mapped interface, which will help you to read data at a faster rate from the flash. So the read transaction, especially with respect to flash, will go through memory mapped interface. But all the write and erase transactions can go through the normal uh, spy mode. And also, you could access other flash devices using the normal direct access path. So th uh, this shows the stack for accessing such spy controllers. So the hash, as I said before, uh, the normal write transaction and erase transaction go through the M25P80 translation into the spy core. And the actual spy controller driver will reside under the spy core itself. And this goes via the normal path. But the, for the read transaction, uh, M25P80 will call spy flash read API, which is a special API provided by spy core to talk to the uh, spy controller drivers with memory mapped IO interfaces. The spy flash read API is supplied with spy flash message structure, which is similar to the spy NOS structure. And this contains all the information required for the uh, controller driver to access as the specific flash. So the writes go through the normal interface, but the reads go through the spy flash read API and the implementation of that API by spy controller drivers. So where do you put a driver? Uh, if you uh, if you have a spy or controller driver, where would you put in one of these frameworks? Either in Spike framework or Spike frame spy or framework or on the Spike framework. Is decided by uh, how you want to support uh, devices on your spy bus. If the spy framework, sorry, if the spy controller provides direct access to the bus and there are no accelerated interface as such, then you would put such drivers under spy framework. If the controller IP supports only f talking to spy flash devices and cannot talk to other type of devices, then you would put them under spy nor framework. And if you have a controller which has both the spy interface and a memory mapped interface, and your board or SOC has both type of devices in the spy bus, that is, you have a flash, a flash device as well as a normal spy device, then you would put the controller driver under the spy framework, but implement both uh, spy related callbacks as well as implement spy flash read API interface so that you could access uh, flash reads via this interface uh, but uh, access other, f uh, other spy devices via the normal spy framework. So, how to write a spy or controller driver? Um, the Spinor framework expects these four, at least these four APIs to be implemented. That is read reg, write reg, read and write APIs. So the uh, read reg API, uh, you implement this API to read data from the flash. That is either uh, status register, configuration registers, or uh, the flash discovery ID that is read is to send read ID command, or to read uh, serial flash discoverable protocols, and so on, to send various, uh, I mean, to read various uh, registers within the flash. Then you would implement the write reg API, which is used to write to these registers, uh, say to send write enable command, or to set uh, 
flash into Quadio mode and all all the right transactions to the spy configuration registers. And finally, implement read write APIs, which is used to read the actual data from the flash, either via the memory mapped interface or any other accelerated interface that SpyNor framework uh, that the SpyNor controller would provide. So uh, the SpyNor struct that's being passed here would would contain the uh, details required to access the flash. So uh, in the probe of the controller driver, you would call SpyNor scan. Uh, the SpyNor scan will request the Spy framework to send a read ID command, that is uh, JDEC read ID command to discover the manufacturer ID and device ID of the flash. Based on this information, there is a table within the SpyNor framework which will dictate uh, for the given flash, for the given flash uh, device ID, what is the size of the flash, what is the array size, sector size and page size of the flash and whether or not it supports uh, quad mode, dual mode I or octal mode and what are the opcodes that needs to be used for the specific flash. So when SpyNor scan API is called, the spy framework would based on that table populate the SpyNor struct with all the required details. This will help the uh, spy controller drivers whenever it wants to do a read or write operations to actually configure the IP registers which require address and address or uh, sorry, uh, which which would require read or write opcodes to communicate with the flash. So then you would call MTD device register which will register the uh, discovered flash with the MTD framework and uh, result in creation of slash dev slash MTD interface. So if, if there are multiple SpyNor devices connected to the uh, controller at different chip selects, you will have to call SpyNor scan for each of the chip selects and register each of the devices. So uh, this is an example for instantiating SpyNor controller driver using DT. So this is an example from Cadence QSpy driver. So you the, this represents the controller node uh, that is compatible with say spy, it's compatible with Cadence SpyNor. Uh, you can see there are two reg properties. The first reg property corresponds to the IP registers where you would actually configure flash specific data or uh, other IP register configuration. And the second address range actually represents the memory mapped IO interface. Using this interface, one could, uh, uh, so this is the address range from where CPU or DMA would do mem copy operations so that uh, which gets translated to, translated to spy nor messages uh, and goes out on the spy bus and you would get data back uh, of what is present on the spy flash. So each of the fly spy flash devices would appear as a uh, child node to the controller driver. You would say compatible is equal to uh, JDEX spy nor if the spy flash supports read ID API. And based on the uh, flash that was discovered, the spy nor frame would take the appropriate actions. Uh, the reg is equal to zero. This property will suggest that this flash is present at chip select zero and the spy mar max frequency will dictate the spy bus rate at which the uh, communication would happen between the flash and the slave, sorry, flash and the controller. And similarly, you would have other flash devices as well. So if the, if the flash doesn't support uh, JDEC read ID, then you would have to supply the name of the flash as one of the parameter to the SpyNor scan API. And if that flash is supported by the framework, then it would do the appropriate configurations. Also, SpyNor scan API will uh, accept hardware capabilities of the NOR flash controller driver. That is whether or not it supports all the IO modes or it's just a, 
uh, single I/O device. Based on the properties the, of the discovered flash and as well as the uh, properties of the controller, the Spinor API would choose the appropriate uh, I/O mode to be used. So yeah, uh, this table shows performance comparison between various uh, framework that I talked about using TIQ spy controller uh, on DRS 7XS families of SOC. This, uh, the TIQ spy controller is a dedicated, I mean, specialized spy controller which can talk to both spy devices as well as spy nor flash devices. So um, under spy framework, with without any acceleration, just going through the traditional route, uh, the read speed is around 800 kilobytes per second with a CPU load of 70%. But under spine or controller driver have or using the spy cores accelerated read interface, which is memory mapped interface in case of uh, TIQ spy controllers, the throughput is approximately four megabytes per second. So one of the reason for this large jump is the fact that Q spy controller doesn't support bus greater than 4K. In case of memory mapped interface, the bus can be as long as, uh, I mean, whatever is the length of the read. But uh, in normal spy mode, it can only support up to 4K bus. Uh, such limitations actually uh, lead to decrease in the read performance in, in case of normal spy mode of access. Uh, and then with DMA, we see that so uh, the controller actually doesn't support reading uh, DMA reads from the FIFO. That is, it has no events going to the DMA, so it's not possible to read data via the FIFO mode. But if you use the memory map mode and use uh, DMA, we see approx approximately 20 Mbps of uh, read with 15% CPU load. Uh, this is because when compared to CPU, the DMA can do larger bus. Uh, hence, uh, you could see that the speed increases further here. But uh, the Spinor controller, uh, I mean, the Spinor framework itself has no support for the DMA. I mean, no generic support for the DMA, but you could still implement DMA APIs and would see the similar performance. Uh, there is no uh, increase in terms of write speed because in write, most of the time is spent polling on the flash to know whether or not a write operation has completed. Yeah. So uh, I'll talk a bit about the ongoing developmental work in Spinor framework. Uh, one of the main uh, things that's being addressed is use of four byte addressing mode uh, for opcodes. Flashes, uh, older flashes had uh, sizes less than 16 megabytes and just required three byte of addressing mode. But newer flashes have higher density and would require four byte of addressing mode. Uh, and there are special opcodes which expect four byte of addressing codes and there are opcodes which just take three bytes of address. Uh, and flashes provide many ways to uh, use the access the memory region above the 16 megabytes. That is, you can enter a three byte addressing mode. Uh, sorry, you can enter a four byte addressing mode by setting a bit within the flash. And then all the three byte addressing opcodes would also expect four byte addresses. Or you could use the dedicated opcodes which will uh, always expect four bytes of opcode irrespective of what is the state of the flash. So, uh, but we should make sure that the communication with the flash is stateless and there's no bit that is set within the flash to uh, enter four byte addressing mode or uh, come out of four byte addressing mode. That's because it would create uh, incompatibilities with the boot bootloaders which would expect it to be in three byte addressing mode say for example, uh, because the bootload, uh, bootloader might be residing within the first 16 megabyte of area. So 
so uh, another uh, uh, thing that is being addressed is flash can send sorry the controller can send command either on one wire or send command on all the four wires similarly address can also be sent on one wire or all the four wires so we call this as one one four one wire for address one wire for data and four wire sorry one wire for command one wire for address and four wires for data and similarly four wires for address uh, sorry four wires for opcode four wires for address and four wires for data um, the in order to work in quad mode th there is a bit within the flash which says quad enable you will have to set this mode uh, set this bit before actually uh, using quad mode of operation but this bit behaves differently on different flashes like for example uh, on spansion with this bit set you could use the flash in this mode or this mode uh, depending upon what command you are actually sending there are different commands for uh, 114 mode and 444 mode but on micron uh, it's always 444 mode that is separated with uh, that is supported with quad bit enable set so uh, uh, we could just not set quad enable bit and uh, not worry about uh, all type of flashes. We will have to do some quad for Micron alone. So the other thing is handling different sector sizes. Uh, flash may support either 32K, 64K or 256K sector size. And optionally, they also have support something called as small sectors, which is 4K in size. So there are uh, dedicated opcodes for this and the, uh, for this sector arrays versus 4K sector arrays. And uh, it is, uh, and there is what you call has serial flash discoverable parameters or a table which is being uh, supported in v4.14. Based on serial flash discoverable parameters, uh, we all, uh, I mean, the serial flash discoverable parameters specifies a table called basic flash parameter table. Uh, this table contains all the information regarding whether uh, the sectors, 4K sector sizes are supported and what is the opcode to uh, erase a 4K sector and what are the uh, opcodes to access in 114 mode or 444 mode and so on. There are different versions of uh, serial flash discoverable parameters, uh, uh, mainly 1.0, 1.5, and 1.6. If the flash supports 1.6, that is the newest version, it would have all the information. But older flash uh, versions, I mean, older flashes don't support the latest version, and uh, we still have to handle this in the framework. Finally, there is being patches for supporting octal mode flashes and also DTR, that is double data rate mode, wherein uh, data is sent both on rising and falling edge of the clock. So one of the things that is missing today in the framework is DMA support. So flash files. Uh, the main reason uh, why it's not so easy to support DMA with NOR controllers is the fact that the flash systems are the flash file systems which make use of the uh, spine or flashes are not written with DMA in mind. That is, they make use of VMLOC buffers and it's generally not uh, easy and safe to DMA into VMLOC buffers. It is known to cause issues with VIVT caches and if the if it's a VPLAC buffers, it's possible that the buffer may be from the LPIE back memory region. And if the DMA engine is that's 32 bit in size, then it cannot actually address the uh, regions in I mean buffers in the LPIE region, which require more than 32 bit of addressing. So the spy core tries to handle this uh, VMLOC buffers by mapping it to an SG list and passing it on to the spy controller drivers. But 
this still cannot deal with VIVT caches or LPAE memory back buffers. So one of the solutions that is used is use of bounce buffers. Um, TIAC used by driver uses bounce buffers, which is an intermediate buffer from which you copy data from VMLOG regions to uh, bounce buffer and then copy from the bounce buffer to the actual destination buffer. Uh, there are other uh, spy controllers which also make use of bounce buffers, but uh, this is spread all over the co uh, all over the drivers, and there is no uh, common implementation as such. So, uh, one of the questions that keep coming up on spy or MTD mailing list is: Can DMA mapping DMA mapping APIs that are generic implementations that are there in the kernel can that be modified to support VMLOC buffers? Uh, for DMA uh, in a sane way so that it could benefit all the driver frameworks. And if mapping such buffers is not possible, whether it is possible to provide a um, bounce buffer, generic bounce buffer implementation within the DMA framework itself so that all drivers can make use of it on its own. Uh, this here are some of the references that I used to present, uh, make this presentation. And I would like to thank Texas Instruments for um, sponsoring my travel and Linux Foundation for giving me an opportunity to speak at this occasion. And uh, with that, I open for question and answers. Yes. Yeah, that's dual stock device. I don't think there is support for any type of dual stock devices. I mean, dual stacked spy devices as of today. <laughs> okay, the question was, uh, there are spy nor flashes which are dual stock. That is, there are two f uh, spy chips connected to a single s chip select. So you could erase 64 K sector, but it will actually erase 128K. And how do you support those things in uh, spy nor framework? That was the question. Okay. Yeah, sure. Spy nine, is it? Okay. Okay. Uh, there is a spy nine APIs that are now available, which should work with uh, spy nines, but we will have to explore how that can be merged with spy nor controller. I don't think you could directly use it. It would require. Yeah, the question was whether we could support a device that supports both spy nines and spy nors. Uh, I guess we'll need a, uh, a, I mean, some common interface that can talk to both spy nine versus nor as well. Uh, although it's abstracted at MTD level, 
but yeah. Yeah. We'll need an SPI flash subsystem, which is more generic and doesn't distinguish between NAND and NOR. Yeah. NAND subsystem, yes. Okay. Sorry, any more questions? Okay, thank you for coming. Thank you. <laughs>